<clears throat> Welcome to this session on surveying. In this, let's first understand what is surveying and why do we really require surveying. Supposedly, I went out and purchased a plot. Now, I want to build a building over it. So before I build my house there, what I need to do is I need to survey. I need to survey and then I need to prepare a rough sketch or a map as to how I want my house to be there, how many stories do I want, and what should be the layout, what should be the open area, what should be the garden space. So that is basically the primary meaning of surveying. So let's start understanding the concept of surveying. So if I say here, surveying is basically drawing or mapping whatever you wish to see or whatever you are seeing on the piece of paper is what is surveying. So for example, I went out, I saw this is the layout for the project that is coming up in the locality and this area would have a series of row houses. Okay, So that would be the common area. I would have we can have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 row houses in this region. This would be the common lane area. The center area would be the garden area. Here there would be a gym facility. And across here there is a railway track. And here is one of the major roads that connect to the city or the I can say, for example, a ring road on a major interstate road. Now what happens is here, if I am here to purchase one of the plots out of these 10 or one of the houses out of these 10 houses, what I would see? Each person can have a different opinion, but I would survey the nearby area. I would see, I would go to these houses and see if the railway track is making a lot of disturbance in that region. Again, I'll come here and see if I will get the basic amenities and basic facilities which I need due to the proximity of the ring road. Then I can say that I need a very good look from the uh, from my front of the balcony. So I should look for something which has a garden. A gym won't give a very good exterior looks, so I should go for a garden. So supposedly I have that mindset. So I should go for plot number eight in this case because it has the garden facility in the front and then it is very proximal to the outer ring road. So I can have all my facilities and uh, daily requirements being satisfied there. So this is a kind of surveying or research I'm doing before purchasing one of the plots in this locality. Now I chose this locality. Now before choosing the, this locality, I, there were other several localities I would have had a similar survey of the region. So this is a basic survey or a fundamental research that you do. Now what is a real survey? Now supposedly I purchased this plot 8 and I want to build a, uh, my uniquely designed house on this region. So this is plot 8. Now I want to build my house on this area. So what I want is, there is a garden exteriorly but I still want a garden on two of the sides. Okay, I want my house to be in two stories and then I want uh, the entry from the outer side. It should be uh, east facing or I should have my bedroom towards the garden. I should have my kitchen and dining towards the roadside. So these are some of the things you plan and based on that you prepare a layout. Okay. Uh, a room of this much size would be sufficient for me. So my bedroom should be this in size. Okay, That is one kind of planning and drawing it on paper. Now the other thing can be the things which are already there or things that already exist on the earth, you just need to draw a picture of that. For example, uh, supposedly I am a builder or a real estate person. Okay. I have a huge property that I want to put on rent. What I will do is, I will have to advertise for it. So if I go and advertise that I have a property at Northeast uh, Avenue, 67th corner, 
Will there be anyone coming there? No. So what I need is a map of it, the exact location of the property, the nearby societies, uh, the map of the region, and then the map of the society itself. So I need the map of the region, which includes the neighboring areas, and then map of the property, which includes the various property numbers, as in this case. So what I'll have to do, I'll have to do a survey in that region. Okay, And based on that survey, I'll draw the map, and then I can release an advertisement. OK, this is my property. This is the exterior of that property. Of these properties, these three properties are vacant, which I need to put on red. Okay. So now, for this, what all kinds of survey can we do? So we must understand the various types of survey. And the most common type is a chain survey. So person A is standing here, person B is standing here. There is a chain. He throws that chain and measures. OK, that is 10 kilometers. Oh, sorry, that's 10 feet. And then he throws the chain there. And there is a person C standing. And he says, it's 5 kilometers. And similarly, you can map the region. So there are two types of chains that are commonly used for surveying. One is known as Gunter 66 feet. The other is known as engineer's chain, which is 100 feet. Now, whenever you do a chain survey, it's the most simplest form of survey, but there are typically a lot of errors in this survey. So what are the common errors? The er error due to pull. If I pull it too hard, it will stretch a lot. And because it will stretch more, there can be error in the exact measurement. The second error is due to temperature. So for example, if my chain is made of steel and it is high temperature, the steel will expand and the measurements would vary. Then it's due to sag. If I'm not pulling it properly, it's loose in between. Then what would happen is there would be an error. So these three are the most common errors in chain measurement or chain survey. The next type of survey that we would be talking about is compass survey. So compass survey is the most popular survey where you have a magnetic needle. You have a needle which is magnetic. And what you try to do is you try to rotate the sequence as a whole. So there can be various types of compass surveys. What does that mean? In open transfers, you have point A, you have point B, and you have point C. So from A to B and B to C, you are measuring. Then you have closed transfers. You have point A, B, and C. So you are measuring A to B, B to C, and then C to A. So that's a kind of closed loop. Now again, compass surveys can be of two types. Forward survey, that means going from the initial station, that is station first, to station two. And then there can be backward survey. What is meant by backward survey? You have station 1 and station 2. You will do a return survey from 2 to 1. So these are the popular kinds of compass surveys that we talk about. The next we would be talking about is triangulation. What is triangulation? Triangulation is any survey where you try to have, uh, you try to draw a triangle. So, uh, here is triangulation. So, in triangulation, what you technically do is you try to measure the angle. So, I, how can I measure angle? If I have this side known and I know this angle, 60 degrees, and this angle, 30 degrees, I can draw another line, the rest of the two lines, and see where is the point 3 located. So this is what is triangulation. You use measurement of angles, and it's either fixed at one of, so one side is known, two angles are known. That is one of the case that you can do. In triangulation, this process is known as triliteration. Then there is another thing that is common in triangulation is resectioning. 
Resectioning is a problem to measure a new unknown point. So you have a new unknown point and you are not able to measure it. So how can you do it? It's located from the angle that is subtended from the other two points. So that is the process. Triangulation was a common method till GPS came in. So after the in, uh, invention of GPS and the global positioning system, triangulation use and application have reduced significantly. The next common method that we use is theodolite survey. Theodolite survey. What is theodolite survey? So in theodolite, try to measure the angle between the horizontal and the vertical. So that angle is measured by surveying. It's mainly used in meteorology. The other places where you are using it is for rocket launching stations and in the rocket launching process. Besides this, uh, what is the main aspect in theodolite survey is you are basically using a telescope and the two axes are perpendicular. So you have two perpendicular axes. One is known as the horizontal or the triunion axis, the other is known as the vertical axis. Okay. So these are the two kinds of axes that we talk about when using theodolite survey as one of the methods. The next method we talk about is known as altimeter. Altimeter is basically measuring the height. So height of any tower, height of any object that is fixed at the ground level. So you can measure atmospheric uh, precision by basically you can measure how high it is and it is basically a precise method of surveying for elevation. So we also know we also call it as precise level or differential leveling. Then there is another way in which you can measure height by altimeters is trigonometric leveling. Trigonometric leveling is another method by which you measure the height. So this is what is the next method which is known as altimeter. Now we will come on to the last and the most commonly used surveying method that is Paint table survey. Now let's see what happens in paint table survey. So I'll show you an image here. So that's what an image of a paint table survey. This instrument is known as tripod. Then from the center of the tripod, you have that is falling here and that maintains the center on the ground. So you have a tripod on which you have the table lid. So this is the tripod. Then this is the plumb box. Then on the top of the uh, table you will have an instrument which would have this shape and this instrument is known as LED. So with this instrument, what you do is you put your eye on the one side, you see the point on the other side, and this has a straight surface parallel to which you mark the lines. So <clears throat> this is how you do the plane table survey. This is usually used for a small area surveys. You cannot do it for very big areas because it's difficult to go from one place to another, and it can be done only till you have a uh, vision of the site. If you have an obstruction in between, it would be difficult to continue the plane table survey. So there are three very important things that you require for a plane table survey. First is leveling. The ground must be leveled. Otherwise, if one of the tripod legs are not properly on the ground, it would cause the uh, errors in elevation. And there would be uh, from errors due to leveling. The second is, Centering should be proper, and that centering is done through plumbar. And third is orientation. I must properly know in which direction I am going. So if I am moving from place A to place B, 
I must know this is the direction I went and 